Hello and welcome. My name is Martin Stürzer and today I'm going to show you the new features of Stepic version 1.5. I'm living in Wuppertal in Germany together with Neptune and here in my studio I do mostly ambient music and other sorts of electronic music. In the last years I recorded over 50 live sets for my YouTube channel and also released music on labels like Sinfera Records or Cryo Chamber or my own label Echo Elberfeld. In my music I'm using synthesizers obviously and I like to play them on the keys but I also use sequences and other tools to control them. One of the most important tools for me is Stepic and with the new version it became much more useful for me because I can now control it with the keys and use the different features and functions by playing notes on the keyboard. In a video that I released a few weeks ago, I demonstrated this in a live performance. I kindly ask you to check that video out and I will also play a few seconds of it so that you know what we are talking about before I explain the different steps, how I put this together and how I arranged the sounds and the music and how I used Stepic to play this live performance. The first sound that I played in this track is a very basic patch from the Oberheim OB6. You could easily use any other synthesizer because the patch is just a sawtooth wave with a closed filter and a little modulation through the envelope of the filter. I opened a new version of Stepic and if I played it back it would sound like this. First thing I do is that I decrease the note length from 16th notes to 8th notes in order to have the sequence playing a bit slower. Then I decrease the step length to 8 and I do this also on the octave switches and also on the divider and I decrease the duration a little bit. There's a little trick that I would like to show you. Um, you can of course change the duration one by one or you can right click on one of the faders and then change all the faders with one drag of the mouse. After that I try to find a nice melody. And also I add a divider to one of the steps, which means that when the sequencer is reaching this step, it just not play one note, but two. And here I like to use uh, the random function of Stepic by clicking on this dice icon, which means that the playhead will jump randomly so that this um, double ratcheting thing does not occur on the same uh, step of the melody. I also want to make sure that this double step is not played twice so that I had four steps at the time. So I click on the dice again um, and so after the sixth step is played back it will always jump to a different one instead of playing it again. Also I will decrease the number of steps to six 
to make sure that this ratcheting um, happens more often. So now it happens in one out of six. If I had it like this, for instance, it would happen in one out of three or in two out of three. So by decreasing the step number and using this randomization function, you can play with controlled chance, which I find very cool. The sequence already sounds quite nice, but I want to add some modulation to it. And for this, I go to the automation page. First, I have to activate the first modulation lane. Um, and then I need to know what kind of MIDI CC controls the parameters of my synthesizers. For instance, I know that um, MIDI CC 102 controls the filter, so I could um, put in number 102 and then control the frequency of the filter. Also, it is possible to create devices by clicking on this little MIDI icon here on the top. And as you can see, I already created a few um, presets where I entered a lot of um, MIDI uh, CCs. So what I can do now is I can click on select MIDI device and select my synthesizer and then just click on the filter. And so I have, um, I'm, I'm able to control the filter with this automation thing. The cool thing is that this is saved within the plugin. So whenever you, you want to make music, you don't have to, to look up these numbers, which is painful, of course, but instead you can just load your preset uh, and immediately go for it. Um, and so let me show you how this works. So this is the filter fully open and then I can, I can close it. Um, when you click on this randomization button, you get um, like endless options for interesting, interesting modulations. Also, a little um, tip: if you right-click it, you get some some curves. So if you want to have like an LFO thing going, then you can use this preset or any other that you like. Um, in this particular case. I don't want how do Neptune. In this particular case, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want stepping to modulate the the whole range of um, of the filter. So I can narrow it down. So I can say, okay, the maximum value should be fifty seven, and the minimum minimum value should be twenty. And when I then click the randomization button, all the values are in between that range. This is very useful if you want to automate something, but don't want the the whole range. Next thing, I want to control the filter decay of the synthesizer. And this is particularly cool because on the original synthesizer hardware, you can't address the decay of the envelopes with any modulation. It's not a modulation destination that is possible within the design of the synthesizer. So um, Stepic enables you to be more creative in terms of sound design with your synthesizer. And I find this very, very cool. Um, in this case, I want the maximum value to be 16. Um, and then again, I click the randomization button. And something I like to do at this point is decrease the length um, because now these two automation lanes will never play the same modulation again. If you have it like this, you have always the same cutoff value um, paired with the, the decay level of the filter. But if you decrease the length, uh, the second lane will reset before the first one. So you have like um, a permutation, whatever. So that makes the sound even, even more alive. Then as the last step, I want to control the resonance. First, again, I check which value makes sense in, in this case. Just by right-clicking and finding something that I like. I think it's good to limit it to something about 86. Um, and again, I decrease the, the length to have an interesting polymetric modulation going on. And 
So just by using these three automation lanes, I made this rather boring patch from the synthesizer much more interesting. Let's listen to it. What I just showed you was already possible with the first version of Stabbing. But now we have some interesting new possibilities to use the keyboard along with Stabbing. In order to make this work, you have to click on the MIDI play button. And you can see that the transport mode is by default set to sync to host. That means that whenever you start your host, Stabbing runs, and when you stop the host, Stabbing stops playing. So in order to use the keyboard, you need to set the transport mode to node on. And let's see what happens when you do this. Um, you play your host and nothing happens. But if you press a key, Stepix starts running. And when you stop the key, then Stepix stops. At this point, it doesn't matter which note you hit, it always starts your sequence. What's very interesting is to set the note in mode from off to one of the three new modes which I will cover in this video. The first one is called transpose. So let's see what happens. If I play the middle C, the sequence plays as we uh, enter it into stepping. But when I hit another key, the sequence will be transposed. This can be very useful for improvising and playing live, but it could also help to arrange music on the timeline when you record it into Bitwig or Ableton or whatever you use. Let's see what happens when I record a new clip. With the notes recorded to a MIDI clip, I can just launch the clip and have the sequences played in the same way that I just recorded them. It's also very nice for editing, so I could just add another note here. Or shorten this one. The next sound in my track is coming from the Virus TI synthesizer. I also record a tutorial on the sound design of that patch, so if you want to reprogram it, you can check the link in the description. For that sound, I recorded two different patterns with Stepic. The first one goes like this. And the second one. The cool thing with the new version of Stepic is that you can switch between the patterns using MIDI input or uh, node input. So in order to this to work, you need to click on this new MIDI mapping icon. And if you want to, let's say, use um, the lowest key on your keyboard, you click on the map button in the first row. And we do the same thing for switch pattern two. And now we can switch between the two patterns by hitting keys on the keyboard. So we can now improvise with these patterns without touching the mouse or the computer anymore, just by the input a Neptune, Neptune. Now I switch the pattern.
Neptune, you really need to go. You can't attack me while I record videos. Thank you. So I'm doing this again because I think that the camera was um, obscured by, by Neptune. Um, so pattern one, pattern two, The next sound is from the Prophet 10 and uses the chord play mode. Let me show you how this sounds. First thing I want to show you is that I use the note latch mode in the setting on before we had it to off, which means that when you press a note, stepping runs, and when you lift the note, stepping stops. But with the note latch on, you can press something and will indefinitely run. Um, and if you go to the MIDI mapping mode again, right on the bottom there is something called release latched notes and if you map this for to anything that you would like to then you can switch the latch off or it's also possible to click on this release latch but i think for for any kind of performances or recordings it's more convenient to map it to a midi note by the way anything that you map uh, that you use for mapping um, is kind of uh, cut off from from the note input. So if you have this key mapped to note latch off, then it will never input any notes to Stepic. Because yeah, you see the, the other notes uh, give an input to Stepic, but um, this one doesn't. This is a very useful uh, and well thought of feature because otherwise um, you would always destroy your sequences when you use some of the MIDI control functions. So what does chord mode do? In chord mode, you can play a lot of notes and these notes will then be played together as a chord. And of course, you can, you can combine this with all the cool features. So in this patch, you see that I use the, the octave switches to create a little rhythmic pattern. Um, it would also be possible to use uh, the divider. Or you could set all these stuff to random. The best way to understand and explore the chord mode is to have the pitch set to to like a flat line. But of course, you could also transpose everything. From the perspective of tonality and, and music theory, it doesn't make sense to, to create like a whole sequence like this. That would sound a bit um, strange, I think. But you never know what you... Uh, prefer <laughs> of um, in taste of music, um, but if you maybe um, transpose it for um, like uh, with a fifth, that could make sense, I think. Of course, Stepic is not limited to control tonal information. It can also be used to sequence drum sounds. In this track, I used Repro 5 to create a kick drum sound. And before I show you how I sequence that sound, I would like to show you a very, very nice new feature of Stepic, which is the through function. Up until this version, if you hit the keys, nothing would come out of Stepic, which is a bit stupid if you want to design a new sound uh, and want to use the keyboard in order to audition your notes. So in the new version, you have a new button called through, and when you click on it, you get a couple of options. Um, and I usually switch on MIDI note on off and also program change because um, I use program changes from Ableton or Bitwig a lot in my live sets. And now Stepic will um, 
let them through to the actual synthesizer, which is very useful. So with these stuff set to on, I can now control it on, on the keyboard. And the pattern that I used in Stepic looks like this. And you see that there is this little um, indicator here, uh, which you can cycle through um, over here. And this means that these two steps will now only be triggered every two times the playhead runs through them. So if you bring it even, make it even more complicated, you can create rhythms that change quite a bit over time, but they are not completely random. There will be a pattern of how this stuff works. Then the same thing was done with, um, with the hi-hat. This is also just uh, a noise generator with some filtering going on and a pattern that I recorded into Stepic using the sequencer. We can also create some, some ratcheting here again. The last new mode that I would like to show you is the arpeggiator mode. Let's load an empty instance of Stepic. Select the MIDI play to node on, and the node in mode will be set to arpeggiator. So when you hit, an, let's say, um, play a chord, you get what you would usually expect from an arpeggiator. Um, you could also increase the range and also do the usual stuff like um, up or down or whatever you, you would like to have. Of course, there's also the latch mode. And while other synthesizers or sequences would have an arpeggiator, it's interesting to combine this with all the crazy stuff that you could do within uh, Stepic. So I could maybe use some more octave switches and set them to random to give the arpeggiator more variation. It would also be possible to throw in a few notes that transpose everything. Maybe also in random mode. So I'm playing a C minor chord, but I still get some interesting notes that are kind of a bit off the scale, but make it more interesting. Also, it would be possible to use the divider function here and there. For more rhythmic variation. And of course, you can also combine it with the automation stuff and literally everything that you have in Stepic. So this is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found it useful and please put your questions in the comments in case I missed something or you have any other ideas that you would like to talk about. I would be very happy if you checked out the music piece that I talked about on my own channel and maybe also the sound design tutorial on the sound from the virus. Have a good day and see you next time.